So let's just take a moment of silence before we begin our service by lighting our anthem. So this time today we are the second Sunday in Advent, so we're going to light two Advent candles. Normally I would ask the person who feels youngest in the congregation to come and light them, but in light of Covid I feel it probably better be you. So from our order of service, we respond as always in the words involved. So as we look at our Advent wreath, we remember those who in ancient times waited in faith and hope for God's Son. These candles we've lit today, we have lit for all those who today, with patient faith hope and trust, make known your light and your love, your comfort and your joy. Into our longing and waiting hearts, give light, give hope, give joy. And we have our first hymn, unfortunately we cannot sing as you probably know, but please get to play for us a couple of verses of the church's one foundation. so as we gather, we remember how we have failed to love God as he loves us. Section 3 on our order of service. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. And this second Sunday of Advent, we hear the collect the special prayer written for this Sunday in the week following, and I'm using the more modern version. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. And Mary is going to bring us our first Bible. Our first reading is from Isaiah 40, 1 to 11. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain, hill, be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. 
Then the Lord, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry, <coughs> carry them in his bosom gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. And speak to God. Right. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Lord, what is it you, O Lord? The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Glory to you. So this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Mary, for reading those two quite long readings for us. Thank you. So shall we pray? Lord, as we share your word together, May we hear you speaking to us today through the words and the lives of your faithful people long ago. Amen. Last week was Advent Sunday. We reflected on how Advent and Christmas may very well feel very different this year, and yet how the timeless message of Advent, the message of expectation and hope, remains the same through all circumstances, even through pain and hardship. This morning, we're going to look at the season of Advent again, but this time from an ancient and traditional perspective. The introduction to Advent from the Book of Common Worship, Times and Seasons, describes Advent as a season of expectation and preparation 
a time when traditionally the church looks not only to Jesus' first coming as the baby in Bethlehem, but also to his second coming, when he will come at the end of time as our Lord and our Judge. Traditional themes for Advent vary, but one of the most traditional themes is the four last things, death, judgment, heaven and hell. And so many of the readings that are set during Advent focus on judgment. They focus on Christ's second coming. And the Church of England's theme for this year, for Christmas, is comfort and joy, echoing the first words in our first reading today from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. What of judgment? Well, this advent we are in the throes of a global pandemic that we know has been caused by human sinfulness. All people, good, bad, and simply unknowing, have been caught up in the consequences of humanity's global lack of love and lack of care for the world that God created. The people Isaiah was speaking to were not in a good place either. They were in exile. They longed to return home. And they believed that their exile had come about because they had forgotten God. They had failed to live as he commanded. Just before the passage we heard this morning, the prophet Isaiah reflects on how God's people have responded to God's love for them. He speaks of how they oppress the poor, they ignore the powerless. They say all the right things, but don't do them. Maybe we hear echoes in our global situation today. I suspect we'd hear echoes in every age. And then in the passage that is set for today, Isaiah turns to reflecting on what God must think of his people. What he must think of the people who have let him down so badly. God's people then were pretty much like God's people today. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her she served her turn. The penalty is paid. God saw all that Israel had done, all that they had not done, and he longed to gather them in his arms. He longed to make a straight and easy road home for them through the desert. He longed to bring them to a place where they wouldn't suffer anymore. He longed to protect them from all harm. He longed to comfort them. God has not changed. The God of Isaiah and his people is our God. Today, God sees all that humanity does, all that humanity does not do. God sees all the ways in which we destroy one another, we destroy his creation. God sees all the ways in which we have forgotten or ignored how he calls us to live. And God loves us. God longs to gather us in his arms and protect us from all the harm and hurt we bring on ourselves and one another. God loves us, not because we deserve it, not because we've earned it, but just because that's who God is. God's very nature is love. And God longs to lead us home to the place where our very nature becomes love too. So this year, in the middle of a global pandemic, how do we respond to such love? How do we proclaim such love to the world around us. Someone once said to me, I cannot change the world, but I can change my bit of it. I would suggest that if we accept only one gift this Advent and Christmas, we each try to accept from God the gift of his grace to help us live more kindly. 
That might be in very small things, like planting flowers that attract pollinators, or giving or receiving virtual gifts this Christmas that support poorer nations in the world. Or it might be bigger things, like looking at who supplies our energy, or how much or how we travel, or changing our diet. So I'm going to end by returning to our traditional Advent message with a question for us all. Advent traditionally reminds us that at Jesus' second Advent, he will come as our Lord and our Judge. The Bible assures us he will judge us with love, however we respond to him. So the question for us all, do our lives reflect that love in all that we do and say and are? Let's pray. Lord, fill our hearts afresh this Advent, that we may wait for you with eager longing and with joyful expectation, and may proclaim you to all the world. Amen. And now Jane is going to bring us our prayers for our world. Let's have a prayer. Advent Lord, be near us in this time of prayer together and give us a sense of your presence with us today. Open our ears to hear your voice and open our hearts to receive your grace. Loving God, bring comfort to our world in troubled times. We think especially of those suffering from coronavirus in those parts of the world where medical resources and financial support are limited and vaccination seems a far off dream. We remember also victims of war, terrorism and crime, and especially the children who do not have the same choices and opportunities in life as those enjoyed by many of our own offspring. May everyone be able to enjoy the aspects of everyday life that we take for granted. Freedom to go to school and to learn, to work and provide for loved ones, and to enjoy those personal freedoms that are a fundamental part of everyday life for us. Give wisdom to those who take decisions on their behalf and on our behalf that they may be guided by your truth for the benefit of all and not the few. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all Christians and people of faith throughout the world, and especially for those in the Church of England. We pray for religious tolerance at home and abroad, by accepting one another's differences and embracing diversity. We give thanks for our benefits and for the unifying presence and spiritual guidance of Louise. And in this advent and of hope and expectation, draw us even closer together in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, we pray for our world closer to home. May we come to protect the beauty and natural resources with which we are blessed. And may we seek to look after our world for future generations. We give thanks for our neighbours and local community, especially in these difficult times. And as we approach a Christmas season that looks very different from normal, we thank you that while we may not be able to be with our families and loved ones in person, we know that you are always with them. 
Where there is weariness, may you bring your rest. Where there is hopelessness, may you bring fresh encouragement. Where there is despair, may you bring hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, may your blessing be upon all those who are sick, in pain, anxious or troubled. We ask you to be close to those passing through dark places, to those undergoing treatments at home or in hospital, and to give thanks for all working in the health services who are treating them. We pray especially for those within our benefice, Leonard Atherton, Petra Bridgestock, Wendy Collier, Morris Dean, Michael Emerson, Emma, Denise Furness, Jenny Hare, Don Hogger, Bill and Marion Hayes Allen, Mary Lee, Peter Mummery, Bill Smith, and we also remember Joan Brown, St. Barnabas, who is recovering from her pacemaker operation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for the souls of those who have gone from our lives and who rest in everlasting peace in your presence. We pray for those who still mourn, whose hearts still ache, and who need your comfort. Strengthen those recently bereaved who sorely fear their loss with the knowledge of your loving presence in this, their, greatest, their time of greatest need. And here we pay especially for the families of Kate Brown and Betty Brownwell of Hope and of course the family and friends of Judy D. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we ask you to help us make time for meaningful preparation for this Advent. In the midst of the rush of life, help us to find inner quietness and an awareness of your presence. Merciful Father, accept our Jesus Christ, the Lord of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jane. And now, Douglas and Mary are going to sing for us and we're going to listen. Heart for that sound. Right, this hymn is Hark the Glad Sound, the Saviour Comes. And um, it was written over 300 years ago, well, about 300 years ago, um, by Philip Donkey.
Thank you. And so we come to that part that is at the heart of our communion services. We come to the Thanksgiving prayer when we celebrate together all that Christ has done for us and we accept his gift of himself as food for the journey, if you like, while we wait in expectation for when he will come again. As we've done before in church, our COVID restrictions still apply, so I will bring communion round to you, and I will serve you in silence. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you sent your Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice received. On the night when he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your poor church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are men, we are of one, because we all share tomorrow night. The body of Christ. So we pray our closing prayer together from section 13. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his prayers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And again, I'm afraid we can't sing. You can come along if you wish. Please go to play.
the sun of righteousness shine upon us and scatter the darkness from before our path and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and with all those we love now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.